Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I am excited to bring you this batch from the song Fun For Me by Meloco. This is for sure one of my favorite synth bass lines from the 90s. And the thing with this sound is that in one way it's so simple yet so effective because it has this saturation and articulation at the same time. And I always thought it was hard to get that punch from other platforms, other plugins, even other hardware synths. But since I have done that video in the channel around filters and I have learned how to use the filters in parallel, I knew that this would be the ingredient at the core of this bass sound. So this video will be divided roughly into two parts. The first part where I explain how to recreate this patch in your Moog or any other system with similar capabilities. And in the second part, I will tell you a little bit about my patch design ideas on how to play this patch and why I have made these choices. So without further ado, let's deep dive in how this patch is made. Before we start a quick disclaimer here, this is a simple patch but you will need one of those stackable cables. So make sure you have one of those before you get started. So what is the essence of this bass line, this bass sound? At its core, this is a single oscillator in the sawtooth waveform. That's where the rich harmonics comes from but the sculpting of the sound comes from sweet spots on filters and modulation here. So you can start your patch by oscillator 1 here tuned to 16 feet and set to a sawtooth. Another characteristic that helps us out making this sound on Moog is that the mixer in the grandmother when cranked to the maximum volume also adds up saturation to the sound. So make sure that your oscillator 1 volume is all the way to its highest volume. Now let's understand where the filter timber comes from. If you have watched this channel before, you probably remember when I did the video on the Mo Grandmother filter combinations that I talked with you about connecting high pass and low pass filters in parallel. And by doing so, what we are creating in essence is a notch filter for the Mo Grandmother. So let's see how is this done. I am patching here my signal with a stackable cable from my mixer output directly into my high pass filter input. My high pass filter is set around 2 o'clock and from the high pass filter output I'm sending the signal to my malt utility here. And that's because we want to use the filters in parallel. But you will also notice that I am connecting the output of the mixer in parallel with my low pass filter input here. In general this is pre-router in the semi-modular architecture, however as soon as you plug something to the output of the mixer that pre-connection is unmade. So that's the reason why we have to send the mixer signal also to low pass filter here. My low pass filter cutoff frequency is between 10 and 11 o'clock. And notice that I'm not tracking the keyboard for the cutoff frequency and I have no influence of the envelope but I have added resonance to about 9 o'clock here. Then the signal that is being filtered by the low pass is sent from the output all the way back to utilities. So you can see now on the blue cable and yellow cable that I have both signals, the one coming from high pass and the one coming from low pass. And then I got the sum of the two filter sounds and patch it all the way to VCAN. And that's what results into this notch filter that we see cutting off the frequencies here. So now let's talk a little bit about the playability or interaction of this patch. The bass line is full of those chromatic sequences where several notes are played very fast. Therefore we want the sound to attack as soon as we play a note and we are not using neither decay or release time. So my envelope here is basically the sustain level of the triggered note. 
But that's not all. If you remember from the introduction, there was a variation from the main bass phrase here that goes more or less like this. And for exactly that leak, I am making use of the modulation here. So let's have a look at the modulation module. My waveform is set to a sine wave and my rate of the LFO it's around 11 o'clock. Notice that for my way of playing I have set the pitch amount to little less than the first grade here and this is because on that lick that I just showed you where you do the jump from the G sharp to the C I am emphasizing the C here in the higher octave with this vibrato pitch modulation. But this happens so fast that the only way for me to play this in the real song tempo was to keep my left hand prepared with my pinky on the mod wheel. And now would engage the mod wheel completely when emphasizing the C here. But I had to do this so fast so that when I play the G sharp there I already have completely disengaged the modulation and I get the plain note. The only way I found was to have a very low pitch modulation here so that I could engage the whole wheel and play it in real time. And talking about playability and the patch interaction, you notice that at the core of this riff is this pitch band going from B sharp to C sharp, like that. And there is a lot in the dynamics or the funk rhythm for this song on how early you cut the sound of the notes or how delayed you play with like the band pitch here. So in order to add to the dynamic, what I did was to actually patch my keyboard velocity on the arpeggiator sequencer module here all the way to my VCA amount. And what this is giving me is this velocity curve. So that if I play it smoothly, the sound is lower. And when I hit the keys hard, I get a more pronounced sound. I don't think that the velocity curve is perfect for my way of playing. I could have run this signal to the attenuator for instance to try to influence the curve but if you have some tips and tricks there please let me know in the comments. So this is a very simple sound yet it is about those two cutoff frequencies here and this asymmetrical notch filter and finding the sweet spots there. But it's also about how you play and how you bring it to the body while listening to the rhythm. So if you want to try this patch, I highly recommend that you create a drum machine pattern so that you can really try to feel the rhythm. And it's really when you blend this sawtooth in your mix that you see how this simple and yet effective reach harmony from the sawtooth does the job to the point that you want to sing along with this bass line the same way you would do with vocals. So this is a short video but I hope you will have fun with this patch the same way I had it while tuning in this sound and also playing along with a drum beat. Let me know in the comments if you have reproduced this patch and how it worked for you. And as always, thanks for watching.